Okay, so I'm going to do a little demonstration on turning form on barg plates. And what I've done is I've got two plates set up. One of the plates has an overleaf um, of vellum, uh, which is just nice trace paper, um, just so that I can uh, demonstrate right on top of the plate the concepts that I want to try and describe here. Okay, so I'm taping those down. So uh, when we first start um, working, uh, with a barb plate, we block in our all of our shapes according to the method that we've been using to block in our shapes, and we uh, identify all of our terminators, fill in all of our shadows, and then what I have people do is do what we call uh, cross-section contour lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on one side, we're going to imagine the three-dimensional turn of the form all the way across to the other side, making sure that we wrap that contour line with just like the edges of an ellipse, wrap that bit around the form so that the three-dimensional form is uh, described completely. So kind of like you're taking a cross section. So what you wanna do is do that about every quarter inch or so. And when there's a shadow, it means that the form for the direction of the light is coming from roughly here. If there's a shadow, um, if the direction of light is coming from here, if there's a shadow, um, it means that the form is turning away from the light source. So anything, any part of the plane that is this angle directly being hit by the primary light source, uh, that angle is going to be very bright. But any angle that is over here, since it can't be touched by the light source, or if it tucks way under, really can't be touched by the light source, that is going to get less directly hit by the light, and therefore it's going to be darker. So you know if it's dark that the plane has turned away from the light. So that's, gonna, that's why this is that angle. It's going to come up. It's going to go across. There's not a lot of shading on the barb plate there for us to be able to see what's happening. But we can kind of imagine this shape here is pushing out towards us. Now there's a little teeny tiny bit of shadow there, and so that's going to tuck down just a little bit. There's a little ridge of tissue there that is pushing up, and then we're going to curl under again and across. So you want to do that almost like you're sculpting, imagining the form goes up, across, because it's getting more light there, up again, across, coming down the other side, a little shelf, and then tucking under. Do that across the entire form, and that way um, you'll be building a three-dimensional construction in your mind of how that form is actually pushing out from the surface. And this is the first step to stopping the habit of just copying values and starting to think of the form as three-dimensional form that's pushing off the paper, and some parts are closer to you, some parts are further from you, some parts are pointing up towards the light, and some parts are turning down away from the light. All right. So that's the first step. And then once we've filled in all of our terminators and filled in all our shadows, and we have a really, really clear idea of where our shadows are, that's working in a very flat way. And so what we want to do is then start thinking in a three-dimensional way. So that cross-section exercise helps think in a three-dimensional way. And then when we start turning form from our terminators up to the light, we're going to work in this think and work in the same three-dimensional way. So this is the habit that a lot of people do when they work. I'm going to do a second piece on here just to show the, the, the general way that people work until they've been trained to work this way. And that is they see sort of a little rivulet of shadow or darkness coming down. And, you know, they'll do it slowly and carefully and with beautiful shading, but they're essentially thinking like this, all the way down, 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 down that shadow. And so what that does is it flattens the form. We don't know what side of the form is pointing up towards the light, what side of the form is turning away from the light, and um, it will make your eye run along these rivulets of shading as stripes, and they could almost be stripes superimposed on a flat surface. They're not really describing three-dimensional form. And then even if you notice that it is getting softer and more uh, blend, blurred or blended and not such a sharp edge, when we think this way, we don't tend to notice the differences in terms of where is it a very sharp uh, contour and where does it softly blend out towards the light, all right? So we want to switch our thinking fundamentally to a three-dimensional way of thinking. 
And the way we do that is we, if, if possible, go ahead and uh, tape up your cross section in your line of sight so that you can remember it. Even tape it on, on top of another printout of the barb plate. And so you've got your shadow shapes all filled in. Some of this is shadow. And I'm doing this really rough and dirty for the point of the demo, but you've done it really carefully. Really careful contours. You've got your shadow shapes all filled in nice and dark, 80 to 90% black. Really nice and dark, just like the bark plate. <clears throat> then what's gonna happen is you're gonna start turning form. What you wanna do is start right at that terminator and start your shading up towards the light. And that's how you're thinking. Whatever method you're using to shape, shade, however your pencil is moving, whatever's going on, you're shading up towards the light from the terminator up. And the reason we do that is because we want to be thinking in this very sculptural round way about how the form is turning up towards the light. And we don't want to just be mindlessly filling in and copying patches of value. What that's going to do is help you notice that this bottom edge of the form as the form, this huge round deltoid muscle here is rounding down, it's actually tucking in. The form is disappearing into, a, and there's another form overlapping it. And so that's what we call the ending of the form. There's a crease there. That's my dog. There's a crease there. And that crease means that that is going to be a sharper edge down there, and it's going to be a softer edge on the top. So all of this is dark light, so you're going to work from that crease up and it's soft and blurry on that end. Now this particular shadow is very soft and blurry. It's a little bit soft and blurry on both sides. But if you are thinking about this three-dimensional form while you're shading, you're gonna notice that it's a little bit softer on this top side, just like our sphere. It's a little bit softer, hard down on the bottom, and then softer going up towards the light. So hard down at the bottom, soft going up towards the light. Same thing for everything, even these really subtle shadows in here. The bottom edge is a line, which is the ending of the form, a crease. You don't necessarily have to draw it in as a line, but you're thinking of it as a hard edge. And then the top edge is soft as it's shading up towards the light. This is going to make all of your shading much create a, a, a much more realistic understanding of three-dimensional form. If you're understanding a three-dimensional form better, your drawing is going to look much more believable and three-dimensional sculpting those shapes as if thinking about what's popping out towards you, what's going away from you, what's turning up towards the light, what's turning away from the light. And you're going to get this really sculptural quality to your drawing. And that's what's so beautiful about these bar plates. They have that sculptural quality built in and you will lose that feeling if you just copy all your values. Okay. One way to think about three dimensional form, organic three dimensional form, um, meaning anything that is a human being or an animal or a plant or a rock, something that was not man-made, that's what we call organic, is that all of these forms, you can picture sort of a mountain range. I'm going to do a little mountain range over here. So this is just a little abstract mountain range. And form tends to push up from the inside out. So you'll see there's these creases right here. So this is my little mountain range. The mountain range does not have scoops here. It's not a wavy line, right? It's overlapping forms. So the form is pushing up and ending right here to crease and pushing up, rounding over and ending, pushing up, rounding over and ending. You're gonna see that kind of shape all over the human body, all right? And so what you wanna be thinking is not what is this rivulet, what is this area of shade and how dark is it and how light is it and how should I shape it, but what is the entire shape that I'm drawing? This whole deltoid is a mountain, and the mountain starts at a valley, which is a crease, and with a harder edge, and rounds up to the top, and then it tucks down in here and rounds back down away from the light, which is why it's getting a little bit darker there. You wanna be thinking about that three-dimensional forms, just like mountains, pushing up from the earth with sharp creases of valleys in between, and that is form, we have the entire form, the form just means three-dimensional shape, entire form of the arm, and then we have subforms stacked on top. And when we're shading, we want to be thinking about what form am I shading right now? I'm not just shading this little edge of shadow, I'm shading this whole entire form, I'm shading the shadow side of this form, I'm shading the shadow side of this form. Alright, so that's going to move you into a more three-dimensional way of thinking about shading barb plates.